Welcome traders to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Manley. Just bear with me a couple of seconds here while we get set up. I'm running a little bit behind schedule. Okay, so once again, welcome to this week's Live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Mundley. Before we get going, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most pertinent for today's presentation is the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. So for those of you who are here for the first time, a very brief introduction to myself. As I say, my name is Patrick Manley, and after I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suites, executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market. Sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or probably more appropriately at that stage, uh, day gambling, you know, the S&P 500. And after some early beginner's luck, I managed to rack up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out and as the market phase changed, I began to basically average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately taking a six-figure hit to my personal capital. To say that was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. So I had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, and extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suits my personality. All of these were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to really stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategies, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process-orientated, and you have a professional trading mindset, and you truly accept and understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game, which you're just simply playing the probabilities, you lose that emotional investment and hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades. Because so I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm a resident market expert exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down fundamental and technical drivers for the trading day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos for markets that I'm actively monitoring for trading opportunities. And I share these through the Tickmill TradingView accounts. I also run Tickmill's eMini Strategy Facebook group where I post a daily trade plan outlining my pre-market thoughts for the New York cash trading session. 
for the S&P 500. I give my bias for the day ahead and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have now delivered over 6,000 points in profits since we launched the group in April 21. Second Tickmill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. Tickmill Futures Telegram Trading Group is a real-time environment. Where on a daily basis, I share in-depth insights, analysis, and trades. I also provide uh, live market commentary during the opening hour of the New York Cash Trading Session. This gives traders an opportunity to essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform helping you to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets. And most importantly, there's mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Let's jump into today's chart deck. As always, what I would say is that if you have any questions, just drop those into the chat box and I will come back to them once I finish my presentation. If you have an instrument you'd like me to take a look at that I don't cover in, uh, in my deck here, then feel free to drop that into the chat box. Along with the time frame you're looking at, that's helpful. And I'll give you a view on, uh, on that instrument at the end of my presentation. So let's start things up here with the S&P 500. So as of last week, for those who are here, uh, you'll remember I was bullish and looking for that uh, upside extension to target 40.75 as the next upside objective. Obviously, we have that yearly pivot just ahead there at 40.56 was looking good until yesterday when um, we got a round of, of poor data really in the US. So we had uh, retail sales, industrial production, producer prices all coming in on the soft side. And the market response, which is obviously the most important aspect of, of data releases, was to, uh, to sell risk assets. Now, previously, we have been in an environment where Bad news has been taken by the market as good news. And why is that? Well, the reason is that the market perspective was that if, uh, if the data was coming in weak, that would uh, mean that financial conditions were, re were restricted. And this would give the Fed cover to start to ease interest rates. Now, yesterday, we had a poor round of data, but we had a, a couple of Fed speakers come out Notably, Bullard and Mester. Uh, Bullard's uh, very hawkish, and uh, and the same with Mester. So, the market was would have would have been looking for them to uh, to start to shift towards a more dovish stance, uh, not necessarily looking at a pivot for the Fed, but potentially a pause or a plateau in rates. But uh, they they didn't deliver on that, and so the uh, the risk appetite soured pretty quickly as the market perspective shifted from. Uh, bad news being good news to bad news is bad news and uh, potentially heading into a U.S. recession. So we've seen a decent sell off. I am uh, I'm currently running short positions from um, where's my book and I'll give you the levels I'm trading from at the moment. So I've got uh, shorts running in the Futures here from 4028. I'm trailing the stop down now and uh, I have a trailing stop coming in around the 320 level. So running about 100 points of uh, profit there. I'm anticipating that um, we find some support here into this 39 handle. And I'll be looking for three wave corrective moves back into a high volume load here, 3960, 3950. And uh, ultimately, what I sense now, as this uh, this is really starting to look quite impulsive, is that we're going to take a look at this uh, daily trend line comes in here at the 3880 level. Now, this is really going to be pivotal because if you look at the weekly chart up here, and I'll just uh, I'll blow that up for you guys so you can get a better look at that. So get the weekly chart. Oops. Here and zoom in on that. <clears throat> so this is the, uh, the the higher time frame view. This uh, this weekly perspective. Now, 
we did actually complete a three wave corrective move into this high here at the 4160s. And uh, we got a bearish rejection outside weekly rejection bar. Obviously, the majority of the market all uh, ran into short positions. And as is often the case, once the market becomes uh, overloaded on one side, we get a squeeze. So we got that squeeze back and we've retested that trend line resistance uh, this week, 4010, 4020 area. And sellers have stepped in again. Now, for me, what's going to be really key is where this weekly candle closes. Because if on a weekly basis, we take out that trend line support in the 3880, 3870 area, that would be a pretty bearish development. And as such, would set up a move down to target the 61.8% retracement of our post-pandemic advance. And we also have the WXY uh, pattern, which would complete into that uh, 3179 area. So the confluence there is just below the 3200 level. That would become the primary higher time frame technical target if we get rejected and close back through this trend line support. Now, obviously, we've got two days of trading left to come. What I am anticipating is that uh, ultimately we find some support here into that 3880s. And I think we can play, uh, I, well, as long as we get confirmations from price action, either intraday or on the daily time frame, depending upon your your uh, your time frame of choice, I would be looking then for a, uh, a move back up to test either the midpoint of the channel. Uh, sorry, first of all, the high volume mode coming in at 13.965s, and then the mid the trend line resistance now comes in at the 4,000 level. Obviously, if we can get through there, then that's going to reignite the upside objectives, and uh, we can think about that 40.75 and the 41.30s above. But for now, we are in a sell off, and it's going to be. Interesting to see where uh, where we it, where and if we find support because if we take out this trend line, all bets are off to my mind uh, on the upside. And the fur and we even on the daily time frame here, if we just think about the equality objective, and I'll draw this in for you. We have the swing high, swing low, and this swing high here. We could easily be back down testing 36.41. That also coincides with monthly projected range support. And when I talk about equality objectives, for those that are here for the first time, I'll draw in the visual aspect of what I'm looking at. So I'm just talking about equal swings in the market, often in scope and scale. So 36.40s, if we take out that trend line support, that's going to become the first target on the downside. So it's really going to be pivotal today. See how we trade into this 38. 80 area. Moving to the NASDAQ. <clears throat> NASDAQ, similar type of uh, setup here. With the NASDAQ, we traded up into, you remember last week, I was talking about the equality objective versus this swing low, 11,098. We were looking for a test of 11,727. Got that test, bear stepped in, obviously, and we've, uh, we've sold off here. So I've been looking now for a three-wave move to develop into test this uh, weekly and daily projected range support, 11,250. And we have this pitchfork support coming in. And let's just uh, add a channel projection here as well. Actually, uh, I'm gonna remove the pitchfork just for now. And I'm gonna bring in the channel measurements. <clears throat> So any move into test 11,250, 11,270, really, uh, if the NASDAQ is going to find its feet here, we'd look for support to develop here. And then we'd look for a move in to test the high volume node 11,523. Now, if, uh, if we don't find support there, again, that's going to be a bearish development. And then we would start to look at downside objectives versus the current swing structure. So looking at the quality, equal legs to the downside would actually give us a downside target of 10,174. Again, note that coincides with monthly projected range supports. So that's an interesting level to keep in mind if we don't find support at the 11,250 area. We to the Dow Jones. Dow Jones was our outperformer, um, but has, uh, has taken a battering here and uh, is looking bearish. From the uh, swing high, 34,480, 
we take out the yearly pivot here, uh, uh, 32,900, then we are looking for 31,692. That's going to be our equal legs objective versus, versus the swing structure. Actually, we need to adjust that. Yes. So the equality objective comes in. Again, note we're getting some confluence here across these US indices pointing towards these monthly projected range supports. So that uh, is 31,900 on the downside uh, with the Dow Jones. The Dow, uh, the Dow, actually, if you look at the daily trend line support here, is uh, it closed through it yesterday and it looks like it's gonna take it out now. So if we go back here to the weekly and bring in the trend line, you can see we have taken that out meaningfully now. Uh, given the current candle, obviously, we would have to see where we close. But I would suggest any close through that yearly pivot, 32,870. I'm going to be setting up on the bearish side looking for this uh, 31,900, late 31,900s as the technical objective on the downside. Moving to the DAX, DAX had been a, uh, a solid outperformer, but is uh, seeing some weakness here in line with the, uh, the US indices. So I'm looking now for a three wave corrective move to play out and ultimately see us test into these prior cycle highs. So we had uh, 14,650 to 14,600. Again, watch the bullish reversal patterns there, a little bit more constructive on the DAX at the moment. If we don't find support those prior highs, then where we'll be looking to is the high volume node and this internal trend line would be a third touch coinciding with the high volume mode. Let me draw it in so you can visualize it more clearly. Oops, bear with me guys. So any pullback into this area, 14,450. I'd be watching for reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. Again, looking for a new next leg to the upside and new highs. Ultimately, we're looking for this high volume node on the weekly time frame, 15,560 is our target. So that could be a nice entry point into that trade if the setup plays out. Alternatively, if we find support, like I said, these prior highs, 14,580 to 14,667. And that also could set the base for the next leg to the upside. And Nikkei, pretty volatile this week, obviously, given the BOJ. The Bank of Japan were widely expected to announce yield curve control. They didn't, and that, uh, that gave uh, a bit of a kick to the markets. So in terms of the price action last week, we were looking for a break of the trend channel support to target our five equals one objective, 24,995. So we broke through the channel. And uh, what I always say is when you get, if you're playing these breaks, you really want to try and get your trade risk-free, certainly at the 50% retracement of the prior leg or any retest into the lows. So you, want, you either want to take half profits or, or take your risk off the table because there is always the chance, as we can see here, that we can do a double correction. So when I'm talking about a double correction, what I'm talking about is A, B, C. So we've got that corrective move playing out like so. We've just exceeded the equality objective, 26,630, but we've run into the 131 extension, which often you'll see price at a minimum stall. If we're going to extend up into that 161, generally what we'll do is we'll pull back and hold the equality objective from above or the potential A wave high and then extend into our 161 extension zone. If we haven't done that here, we've pulled, we're selling off straight through. So uh, we'd anticipate now that the, this is a correction that is potentially complete. And you'll remember on the daily time frame, we have a downside objective, 24,890 is our equality test. Moving to what was the standout performer uh, in the back end of last year and anticipated to be so in this year is the Nifty. Nifty had completed its quality objective, extended to the upside. Last week, we were looking for an extension into test the high volume node 17,716. I haven't had that, but we can see the potential for that still to set up here. So if we hold, you can see we've done a three-way correction here. So if we hold this trend channel resistance, look for this move into test 
17,697. That's the high volume node on the four hour time frame. This level here, the 17,631, is a symmetry swing objective. When I talk about symmetry swings, they're similar to equality objectives. So a symmetry swing simply means that we're getting a correction similar in scope and scale to the prior corrective leg for once again resuming to the upside. So we are watching that, uh, that potential support zone to, uh, to set long positions in the nifty as, uh, as it really is the uh, has been, and I anticipate to remain so, the standard formula in terms of equity indexes. Moving to the bond market, we'll use TLT as our proxy here. So last week we were looking for this move up into the 108.50s to hold and potentially give us a three-way corrective move down into trend channel support and the uh, monthly projected range support. We look like we're going to take this out here. So any close back through the highs, 109.80, we want to engage on the long side. And our target is going to be an equal legs an equality corrective move, which will at this stage of holding the 9920s will give us 116.83 on the upside. So any daily close through resistance, 10950s, I'm going to be looking to engage on the long side, targeting the 116.80 on the upside. Moving to foreign exchange domain, starting with dollar index. Obviously, weak starts of the year. I've got a downside target here. We, came, we did test the initial target, 101.20s. Uh, I've got a long position running in the dollar index at the moment. It's just underwater. I got in at 102.15 on the reaction of this, uh, this candle here. We had some nice momentum divergence. We'll see if we can break through this internal trend line resistance. Uh, then we should look to the weekly projected range resistance, daily projected range resistance, resistance, sorry, and the midpoint of the channel, which gives us the 102.90s as the first leg to the upside. And if we get through there, I'd be looking for a move, a uh, three-wave move back into test 103.40s, 103.50s as the next upside objective. Moving to the euro. <clears throat> euro ha is the, is, is really this, the, the standout performer in terms of uh, major FX pairs at the moment. And that's been principally driven by some pretty hawkish rhetoric coming out of uh, the ECB officials. Uh, we had uh, we had a bunch of them out earlier this week talking, and last week, really talking up the idea that uh, rates are going to be elevated, uh, restricted monetary policy is going to be in place at least into the summer in the Eurozone, and that's leading to support for the Euro. However, any move at this stage into trend channel resistance, weekly projected range resistance, 109.20s, 109.30s, as long as we maintain momentum divergence here, i.e. make new highs in price, no new high in the momentum study, I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns. I think we've got a date back down at 106s before we can, uh, can put in place the structure for a real break to the upside. My next target on the upside, if we hold those 106s, is going to be 111.60, 112. Uh, I think we get a test there. If we don't hold the 106s, the last real support zone will come in on this weekly trend channel support. 103s will be my next area. If we take out that, then uh, we could suggest that this is a false break to the upside and, uh, and we can look at downside targets again. Sterling, a decent week, Sterling. I hit a couple of targets on the upside. That 123.19 was where I was uh, targeting as of last week, we've taken it out. So now my next upside objective is into this daily and weekly R3, 124.60s. But ultimately on the basis we've taken out the 78.6% retracement of our prior decline, uh, technically that gives a target of the 127 extension, 126.14s on the upside. Ideally what I'd like to see is a three-way move back into putting the third test of this trend channel support just below the 121 handle. I'd be very interested there on a daily scale, watching for Venus reversal patterns, set up the move into 126, 127 as our next targets. And that coincides with the weekly projected trend channel resistance. Moving to the yen, whipsaw of a week, but the, uh, the resistance held, we didn't break out of the trend channel. And once again, focus shifts to the downside. And really, uh, the, the move that we saw in the end was, uh, was driven by the idea uh, that the BOJ, as hotly anticipated, did not uh, announce a, uh, 
uh, uh, did not announce removing the uh, yield curve control policy that's been in place for, for a long time over in, uh, in Japan. And that led to some uh, yen weakness and some Nikkei strength. That was reversed on the day. And we are now back in the trend channel that we anticipate. My target on any close through 127.16 remains 125 for now. At this stage, we'd have to take out this trend channel uh, resistance on a closing basis to suggest a more meaningful low in place. And I move back up to test 134.50s, 135 on the upside. Moving to the dollar CAD. <clears throat> A little bounce here. I'm looking for any move into the high volume node and trend channel resistance at the 136.20s. I want to be in on the long side. My downside target remains the equality objective versus this swing structure, 129.70s. At this stage, it will take a weekly close or a daily close, sorry, back through 137 to suggest uh, further consolidation in the upper end of the range. Moving down under to Australia. Aussie traded into the weekly projected range resistance, strong sell off, uh, better jobs data in the, uh, oh, sorry, weaker jobs data in Australia has led uh, many to, to assume that that means that uh, the RBA can take a break in terms of their rate hike cycle. And that's obviously led to some relative weakness here in the Aussie. In terms of the sell off, you recall the symmetry swing moves. So we tested just shy, just a, a, in advance of the last major sell-off in this cycle here. If we move to the next cycle out, so if we look at the sell-off that we saw uh, in December in the Aussie, and overlay that versus our current swing high, we've got scope here to move down to the 6790s. I, what I'd anticipate now is we consolidate here, check back up into uh, resistance, this high volume node, 69, 60s. And uh, from there, I look for another leg to the downside, 67, 60s. But again, I'm, uh, I'm certainly not bearish on the Aussie over the, uh, the remainder of this year. And any move into this daily sports zone at those 67, 80, 67, 60s, I'll be looking for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. We've got an upside minimum equality objective versus the swing low at the 6620s, which gives us 7340s as the technical upside objective. And that coincides with weekly projected uh, trend channel resistance as well. So some chunky targets on the upside for the Aussie. I don't think we're done yet. And uh, I'm, I'll be looking for an entry point. Kiwi uh, correcting, double top. And we have taken out the trend line support like so announcement overnight that uh, the New Zealand PM is resigning so uh, political concerns there potential double top here on the weekly as well I'd be looking for a move back down into just shy 60 50 area to uh, re-engage on the long side ultimately I'm looking for a trend channel test here 67 30s so uh, just monitoring the correction at the moment I think immediately to do their gold. I'm running a long gold position as we uh, as we held trend channel support. It looked like it was working fantastically at one point. I did actually manage to get uh, scale out half of my position. So I've, I'm essentially running a risk free long position from 1899 uh, at the moment. And so I'm anticipating as long as we hold that support, this trend channel support, that we do get a run up to test the 1950 level is my next upside objective uh, for gold. And so we'll see how that plays out. Like I say, risk-free for, for me at the moment. Next confirmation for this one will be a close through that triangle resistance there coming in and daily range resistance, 1930s. And that should see further upside extension as, as shorts will likely cover silver this is one that i'm paying close attention to seeing uh seeing the potential for some significant upside here certainly if we can get a close through this weekly trend channel resistance 25 11 25 12 that would be a very bullish development uh, next stop 27 50s but ultimately i'd be looking then for a move up through that 30 dollar mark uh on the upside and, uh, and that would really inject some momentum into what has been a very sleepy market. 
uh, in general, but this has been a bullish development since the uh, since the September low, and you can see it's starting to look impulsive here. And look to think to map out a five wave sequence. So uh, I've been paying attention to silver in the coming weeks as uh, as a, an instrument to uh, to engage for a position trade, longer term trading opportunity. Crude oil. I'm running along from 7740s. Was looking really great, but as a with sell off yesterday. We're back down now, trading 7850s, got my pot there, 7950s. So we are seeing a little bit of improvement. Certainly don't want to see this 77, 7770s taken out, trend channel. That would warn of a deeper pullback to the 7410. I am bullish crude this year, and I'm looking for, uh, for a retest of the $100 mark. So I'm trying to establish position trades here at the moment in terms of crude oil. Can't, uh, I'm not concerned to the downside unless we take out the 7240 on a closing basis. Uh, last but not least, I'm going to wrap things up today with Bitcoin. Bitcoin, wave three, potential high in place now. Looking for a wave four consolidation. Like any move back into the 20,000 level, watch for bullish reversal patterns for a five equals one extension to the upside. Uh, minimum target there is going to be into 22,000. Uh, we've got the yearly pivot then acting as a magnet above us at 27,000. I'm going to keep, uh, I'll be updating Bitcoin um, on Monday in the trading, uh, through the Ticknell Trading View account. Interesting to see how the price action plays out over the weekend. We've also got some nice confidence down here at 19,200 trend, projected trend channel support. And often you find when we get these base moves, the the base channel, what was resistance, will now act as support. So we've got some nice confidence there. 19,120 will be another area I'll be paying close attention to. And that concludes this week's tour of the markets I'm tracking and opportunities I see. Like I say, I want to pay close attention to some big trend lines in these equity indexes. Look like they are going to get tested. Are there any questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, typing an N in the chat box is helpful for me, so I know I've done a reasonable job of explaining what I'm looking at. Uh, I'll post into the chat box as well the link for the uh, Facebook group. Just act, just request access. You get access to my daily trade plan there, the S&P 500. I also post some other interesting stuff with respect to um, institutional research. And last but not least, I'll give you the trading view link. So for those of you who want to follow along with my ideas in terms of the trades and, uh, and track those in real time, you can do so at this link here. And I think you can subscribe as well and get notifications as I post new setups. Okay, I can't see, ah, q and question, let's see. No, thanks, Jason. Okay, guys, if there aren't any questions, I'm going to wrap this session up here. And as always, um, thanks for taking the time to join me today. And uh, remember to plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.